Welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for November 25th, 2021. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with a goal of hearing half of the Bible by January 9th, 2021. We began this journey of hearing God's Word daily at the beginning of July 2021. And we were at the halfway point. So, we should be completed by January 9th. John, the book of John, chapter 12, verse 46 reads, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And 1 John 1, 5 reads, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And John 8, 12 says, says, I am the light of, Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not abide, shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And G- John fourteen six says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And finally, Luke eleven twenty eight. But he said more than that. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And so, according to Romans ten seventeen, faith comes comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so, today we will hear Psalm eighty, Psalm eighty one. Proverb 25, because it is the 25th day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, one for every day of the month. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 1, through chapter 24, verse 27. And the New Testament reading will be from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 through 29. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated used by permission, all rights reserved. Amen. And now, Psalm 81. A Psalm of Asap, and it reads, Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the temple, the pleasant harp with the lute. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. This he established in Joseph as a testimony when he went throughout the land of Egypt, when I heard a language I did not understand. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the baskets. Verse 7. You called in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Mirabah. Selah, which means pause and think of that. Verse 8, hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you will listen to me, there shall be no foreign god among you, nor shall you worship any foreign god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart, to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn their hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their fate would endure forever. Verse 16 and last. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. And the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. And now, Proverb 25. And it reads, These are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. 
Take away the dross from silver, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king, and do not stand in the place of the great. For it is better that he say to you, Come up here, than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom your eyes have seen. Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? Debate your case with your neighbor, and do not disclose the secret to another. Lest he who hears it expose your shame, and your reputation be ruined. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. Like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearance a ruler is persuaded, and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Verse 17. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house, lest he become weary of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness also his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather, and like vinegar on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain, and a backbiting tongue and angry continents. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring and a polluted well. It is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. Verse 28 and last. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Amen. And the word is already blessed. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Ezekiel, beginning at chapter 23. And it reads, The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They committed harlotry in Egypt. They committed harlotry in their youth. Their breasts were there embraced. The virgin bosom was there pressed. Their names, Ahola, the elder, and Aholiba, her sister. They were mine, and they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholiba. Ahola played the harlot even though she was mine, and she lusted for her lovers, the neighboring Assyrians, who were clothed in purple, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. Verse 7. Thus she committed her harlotry with them, all of them choice men of Assyria, with, and with all for whom she lusted. With all her idols she defiled herself. She has never given up her harlotry, brought from Egypt. For in her youth they had lain with her, pressed her virgin bosom, and poured out their immorality upon her. Verse 9. Therefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, for whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness, took away her sons and daughters, and slew her with the sword. She became a byword among women, for they had executed judgment on her. Verse 11. Now, although her sister Ohalaba knew this, she became more corrupt in her lust than she, and in her harlotry more corrupt than her sister's harlotry. 
She lusted for the neighboring Assyrians, captains and rulers clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled. Both took the same way, but she increased her harlotry. She looked at men portrayed on the wall, images of Chaldeans portrayed in vermilion, girded with belts around their waist, flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like captains in the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. As soon as her eyes saw them, she lusted for them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. Verse 17, Then the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their immorality. So she was defiled by them and alienated herself from them. She revealed her harlotry and uncovered her nakedness. Then I alienated myself from her as I had alienated myself from her sister. Yet she multiplied her harlotry in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, when she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she lusted for her paramours, whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus she called to remembrance the luridness of her youth, when the Egyptians pressed your bosom, because of your youthful breast. Verse 22. Therefore, O holy Ba, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will stir up your lovers against you, from whom you have alienated yourself, and I will bring them against you from every side. The Babylonians, all the Chaldeans, Pekad, Shoah, Koah, all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, captains and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. And they shall come against you with chariots, wagons, and war horses. With a horde of people they shall array against you, buckler, shield, and helmet, all around. I will delegate judgment to them, and they shall judge you according to their judgments. I will set my jealousy against you, and they shall deal furiously with you. They shall remove your nose and your ears. And your remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take your sons and your daughters, and your remnant shall be devoured by fire. They shall also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewelry. Thus I will make you cease your luridness and your harlotry, brought from the land of Egypt, so that you will not lift your eyes to them, nor remember Egypt any more. Verse 28. For thus says the Lord God, Surely I will deliver you into the hand of those you hate, into the hand of those from whom you alienated yourself. They will deal hatefully with you, take away all you have worked for, and leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your harlotry shall be uncovered, both your luridness and your harlotry. I will do these things to you because you have gone as a harlot after the Gentiles, because you have become defiled by their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will put her cup in your hand. Thus says the Lord God, you shall drink of your sister's cup, the deep and wide one. You shall be laughed to scorn and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of horror and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You shall drink and drain it. You shall break its shards and tear at your own breasts. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Verse 35, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, therefore you shall bear the penalty of your luridness and your harlotry. Verse 36, The Lord also said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ahola and Aholibah? Then declare to them their abominations. For they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols, and even sacrificed their sons, whom they bore to me, passing them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, they have done this to me. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day, and profaned my Sabbaths. For after they had slain their children for their idols on the same day, they came into my sanctuary to profane it, and indeed thus they have done in the midst of my house. Furthermore, you sent for men to come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent, and there they came, and they washed your, and you washed yourself for them, painted your eyes, and adorned yourself with ornaments. You sat on a stately couch with a table prepared before it, on which you had set my incense 
and my oil. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her, and Sabians were brought from the wilderness with men of the common sort, who put bracelets on their wrists and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said concerning her who had grown in adulteries, Will they commit harlotry with her now, and she with them? Yet they went into her as men go into a woman who plays the harlot. Thus they went into Ahola and Aholiba, the lurid women. But the righteous men will judge them after the manner of adulteresses, and after the manner of women who shed blood, and because they are adulteresses, and blood is on their hands. Verse 46. For thus says the Lord God, Bring up an assembly against them. Give them up to trouble and plunder. The assembly shall stone them with stones and execute them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire. Thus I will cause luridness to cease from the land, that all women may be taught not to practice your luridness. They shall repay you for your luridness, and you shall pay for your idolatry idolatry of sins. Then you shall know that I am the Lord God. Chapter 24. Again in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, write down the name of the day. This very day the king of Babylon started his siege against Jerusalem. This very day. And utter a parable to the rebellious house, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Put on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Gather pieces of meat in it, every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with choice cuts. Take the choice of the flock, also pile few bones under it, make it boil well, and let the cuts simmer in it. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is in it, and whose scum is not gone from it. Bring it out piece by piece, on which do not, on which no lot has fallen. For her blood is in her midst. She set it on top of a rock. She did not pour it on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may raise up fury and take vengeance. I have set her blood on top of a rock, that it may not be covered. Verse 9. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I too will make the pyre great. Heap on the wood, kindle the fire, cook the meat well, mix in the spices, and let the cuts be burned up. Then set the pot empty on the coals, that it may become hot, and its bronze may burn, that its filthiness may be melted in it, that its scum may be consumed. She has grown weary with lies, and her great scum has not gone from her. Let her scum be in the fire. In your filthiness is luridness, because I have cleansed you, and you were not cleansed. You will not be cleansed of your filthiness any more, till I have caused my fury to rest upon you. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not hold back, nor will I spare, nor will I relent according to your ways, and according to your deeds. They will judge you, says the Lord God. Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke, yet you shall never mourn ne nor weep, nor shall your tears run dry, run down. Sigh in silence, make no mourning for the dead. Bind your turban on your head and put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your lips and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. So I spoke to the people of the morning, and at the evening my wife died. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. Verse 19, And the people said to me, Will you not tell us what these things signify to us, that you behave so? Then I answered them, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, your arrogant boast, the desire of your eyes, the delight of your soul, and your sons and daughters whom you left behind shall fall by the sword, and you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat man's bread 
of sorrow. Your turban shall be on your head, and your sandals on your feet. You shall neither mourn nor weep, but you shall pine away in your iniquities, and mourn with one another. Thus Ezekiel is assigned to you, according to all that he has done you shall do. And when this comes, you shall know that I am the Lord God. Verse 25, And you, son of man, will it not be in the day when I take from them their stronghold, their joy, and their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that on which they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that on that day one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. On that day your mouth will be open to him who has escaped. You shall speak and no longer be mute. Thus you will be assigned to them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And this word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. And now, the New Testament reading from the book of Hebrews, beginning at chapter 12. Amen. And it reads, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My sons, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us, as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we might may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people, and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest any one fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Verse 18, For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, and that burned with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure what was commanded, and if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned, or shot with an arrow. Verse 21, And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, 
to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake, not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the word is already blessed. And I pray every hearer is also blessed that your faith has grown, that the word has strengthened you, and that you have been healed and delivered from every destruction and all your afflictions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For such is the power of the word, the living word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen in Jesus' name.